Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we're going to try and get our Mars missions together. Well, not all of them. Uh, we've got eight missions to deal with and just going from out to in, uh, we've got an Ares Pod G in a very high orbit but it really can't land on Mars. It doesn't have enough Delta V. Just short, really. Um, 3,948. That's enough to land but it's not enough to take off again. So. Uh, it's also out of plane with everything else, so we're, we're just going to leave it be for now. And uh, perhaps we'll correct its inclination eventually, and then bring it to something. But maybe we'll wait until we know what needs it, and then have it become active. But beyond that, we have a light lander and a UDMH depot. So my plan is to rendezvous the UDMH depot with this light lander, and then bring them down to the altitude of our station, which is right around there, um, Marsport 1 there. So, uh, well, I won't uh, select it right now, but it's down here, and so we need to bring them down. And that light lander can then help us land on Phobos and Deimos. We don't want to use its fuel, because it will need that fuel to land on Phobos and Deimos, We'll just use the fuel from the UDMH depot in order to do all of its maneuvers and dock with the station. And so we can't use the other light lander because it's technically defunct, it's suborbital and can't be saved. And it's not one of the eight missions that I've counted. So those are the top three. And then Ares Pod A I'm going to actually handle first. And we're going to continue air breaking it down to the level of the station. And the station is going to actually use its fuel to rendezvous with this Ares Pod G, which can land on the surface of Mars. It has 4, 000, almost 4,700 meters per second, and that will be enough to land and launch back into orbit again. But we don't want to use any of its fuel, really, uh, to do that. Uh, so we'll use the spare fuel from Mars uh, Port 1 to get to it. Mars Base 1 down here has to land on the surface. And we'll just uh, take care of that. We're not going to correct any inclinations just yet, by the way, even though we're not quite in the plane of Phobos and Deimos right now. We're close enough, and uh, the higher-up missions can obviously correct their planes easier. We're probably going to, uh, with whatever mission needs to get to Phobos and Deimos, boost high first, go to Deimos first, and uh, correct inclination up at Deimos level. And then after landing on Deimos, go to Phobos is probably the order of things. So Ares Pod A is going to air break down, and then we have in the middle here a light lander that we can't use, but also a spare UDMH depot. And the UDMH depot that's in this orbit right here is just going to be left there. Uh, for now, we'll just have it as backup. We won't use any of its fuel. Uh, it will take. It has like 7,200 meters per second on its own, but of course it's meant to tug other stuff. And it would take 466 meters per second to get down to the station's orbit right now. It could also uh, go down to the station and go back up again to date most or Phobos or anything like that. It's got a lot of delta V, so it's flexible and can potentially refuel Ares Pod A if necessary, but I don't think Ares Pod A needs to be refueled. But anyway, for now, the first thing I'm going to do is air break Ares Pod A uh, down to the lower level. And I'll come back to you once all that is done because I don't want to bother you with all the air braking passes. We'll take it down to a periapsis of 70 kilometers, which we saw was safe in the previous episode. And if something bad happens, I'll tell you. Okay, there haven't been any problems and I've reduced the orbit of the Ares Pod A to an apoapsis of 5,915 kilometers and a periapsis outside the atmosphere now. So an orbital period of 4 hours and 18 minutes. This is as low as I felt I could go without the electric charge diminishing. So I'm just going to take it around for an orbit and see that we don't end up depleting all the electric charge. So we can see it replenishing. You can see it was pretty close to a completely depleting there. So I didn't want to... Ooh, very close. It was very close to the atmosphere, but no, this time it is going to deplete a bit. So definitely I can't bring in any lower. We're, we're going to rendezvous the station to it and the station can fully recharge it. 
And when it departs the station, it should be, you know, when they return home to Earth. This is all this vehicle is, is an Earth return vehicle. Okay, well, we're, we've got some work to do. So, time to focus on Marsport 1, which is going to rendezvous with Ares Pod G. Okay, so here we are with Marsport 1, and just in case the whole concept of rendezvousing the station with the pod sounded weird, just remember that it's not really that big a station. Uh, it's really just one module. It's still 32 tons, but that does include the heat shield, which we currently still have, and that's because we've got these tanks and these engines still attached to that heat shield. Well, really attached to de the decoupler for the heat shield, not the heat shield itself, but... Um, yeah, uh, we're eventually going to have to dump that, but not before we rendezvous with stuff. We could probably hang on to it or right through the rendezvous with Ares Pod A. Right now we're just trying to get to Ares Pod G, which is the lower one. And it is... it'll take about 100 meters per second or so. We've got it plotted out so that we have a separation of 2.9 kilometers in 14 hours. And I'm taking things easy, we're just gonna take our time with everything. So the first node's in six hours, and that'll mainly be an inclination change higher up. It occurs to me that this might be a little bit imbalanced with Ares Pod G on, though, because Ares Pod G just has a propellant-only docking port. It's going to make things somewhat difficult. It makes me think we should go for Ares Pod A first, but we actually want to end up at Ares Pod A's orbit. Oh, that was a pretty high closest approach distance. What the heck? What do I trust now? Oh no, it's going down again. Hmm, strange, okay. Just wondering about some maneuver node false advertising there. Okay, 400 meters. There's still a surprising relative velocity to the target. 81 meters per second. So yeah, it's gonna be an awkward assembly that tries to get itself to Ares Pod A. We'll take our time with that. I guess we'll use RCS and just really be patient about it. Ares Pod A actually does have some extra fuel. It's got about 400 meters per second that it can use and still have enough to get back home. So maybe we can use some of its fuel to do the rendezvous. It might be safer. I think I put a small reaction wheel somewhere under here, right? That would have been a smart thing to do. I think it's underneath the docking port around here. That's why the docking port is higher than the pod, you see. There's a re reaction wheel right there. For now, I'm not dumping the heat shield unless I actually have to. Okay, closest approach distance now, just 2.4 meters. We are approaching, pointing with this docking port. I'm hoping that there's not going to be any problem keeping the solar panels out. But you never know. It's got its own solar panels out too, so it's sort of a jumble. Let's see, maybe this should retract its solar panel. It's not really pointing at the target, come on. Ooh, it is all very tight, but okay. Oh, there we go. All right, well, it's all docked together. Well, this part anyway. Now, we gotta get Ares Pod A onto all of it and let me do some while well, the game is thinking about all this and pondering what to do to me um, we are going to dock Ares Pod A to this docking port I think it's got a full Apollo docking system and then we will be done with this part and we will turn to getting the UDMH depot to the light lander and then tug the light lander to Marsport 1 as well it's gonna be quite a mess but sort of an impressive looking assemblage, I think, at the end of the day. Anyway, let me plot to rendezvous with Ares Pod A now and see what we need to do for that. Wow, three degree inclination difference. Well, that's not going to be great. Okay, so first thing, we are going to try to make an inclination change. I mean, strictly speaking, we don't have to. I mean, we could try and rendezvous with Ares Pod A right there at the descending node, right? It's right at periapsis, it's pretty convenient. But, 
Um, let me just use this as an opportunity to see how well it handles because if we do try and rendezvous with it uh, with still a three degree inclination that doesn't give us a whole lot of time to match velocities with it and yeah and if it turns out that we can't use the Gemini lander engines which are here because we've got this thing sticking out off one side um, and it's likely that we can't then we'd probably want to just resolve the inclination issue slowly with RCS out here instead of trying to match velocities at periapsis when there's not much time. Now I've locked all the fuel in the Ares Pod G and even disabled crossfeed so that its RCS will not be used right now just so I can see how that works out. Probably not very well. Oh, so I've locked uh, this tank here. Well, uh, here goes nothing. Let's see how these Gemini lander engines do at low thrust. Uh, well, as expected, it's going to deviate horribly. Hmm. Yeah, I think there's just going to be a painful experience if we try and use this to do the rendezvous. So... I think we'll just use the fuel from Ares Pod A. Oh no. Maybe we can figure out a way to do this burn. I, I do want to get rid of this fuel here. We've already topped off the Ares Pod G, we topped off the other tank here. So I don't want to abandon this fuel. If we can find a way to use it constructively that would be nice. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can do this correction with just the RCS anyway. I wonder about these thrusters though. Maybe I do need to like uh, stage them. I didn't think I would, but they're sure not firing. Anyway, our relative inclination has gotten worse rather than better so far, so... Okay, on to Ares Pod A, and hopefully it won't take too much of its Delta V to rendezvous with this. Well, it is a bit annoying, and we're probably going to need the UDMH Depot, one of them, to help out with refueling this afterwards. But uh, we're going to do a 13 meter per second burn here after a day or so. And then we're going to end up with a relative velocity of about 235 meters per second that we'll have to boil off to rendezvous with the target. So that's pretty hefty still within the fuel margins. Technically we wouldn't need the UDMH Depot to help us because even those two burns combined is less than 300 and we only need 2100 to get back home. But we want a little bit of room on that. Okay so I've handled the correction burn with RCS and now we're going to meet up with uh, the Marsport 1 plus Ares Pod G all right, here we are approaching the target. Three minutes to closest approach. Current distance 45 kilometers. These engines have 48 ignitions left, so no problem there. And we're balanced, and even with the heat shield, they're able to fire. That's sort of the point of this configuration. Oh, this is also a propellant-only docking port. Well, that's going to make this whole assembly rather unfortunate looking. I think I've got too many Apollo docking ports here. Not enough uh, propellant only docking ports on the actual station. Now two Kerbals, Felipe and, or I think Philippe and Newcast are both pilots. And I think my current plan is one of them is going to land on Phobos and Deimos and the other is going to land on Mars. And so we'll divide up the responsibilities like that and thereby not risk both Kerbals at the same time. We might end up killing both of them, but still, uh, we won't be risking both of them at the same time. Okay, we do have a closest approach distance of 45 meters now. We are already 1.2 kilometers away from the target, and we still have the fuel that we need to get home, so that is good. And just a reminder, the spaceport, the Mars port, had food, water, and oxygen all on its own, 
So we're going to have a much better life support situation. Not that we were in any sort of trouble. Uh, the life support that we have in here was ready enough to cover the entire time through the whole Mars stay and the journey back home. But more margin is always helpful. So anyway, we continue on approach. Looks like seven minutes to the target. And let's have the target turn the right docking port. Though we are running out of the correct type of docking port here. And hopefully once everything is connected we'll have enough electric charge generation. We'll certainly have solar panels poking out everywhere. All over the place. Solar panels for days. And uh, certainly more electric charge storage. The Aries Pod A only has 14,000. So this will be a boost and will probably help us retain electric charge during the nighttime side a little bit better. Okay, that's better. Make sure we've got that set as target. Negative parallel. Make sure this is facing us so that we have the most minimal strife. And also that that is off so that doesn't wiggle as we get close. Okay. Now I still have to worry about the solar panels hitting each other. And actually I think I'll retract these for now. Not that we don't need them, we certainly do. Then again, I think I'd tweak scale these smaller than the normal size, and probably the ones on the station are bigger than these. Okay, slowing down. Approaching the dock. Good thing I retracted the solar panels. There's no way they would have survived correctly. And then we would have been in big trouble. Solar panels aren't all the solar panels that are necessary to return home. It's not an option. Okay, find a docking port, please. I, I approached it a little bit too quickly. Okay, there we go. All right, so which solar panels would be safe to extend? I think this one is good. Yep. And this one. And yes, the ones on Aries Pod A are much smaller than the ones on the station. Station has really big panels. There's no a downside to extending all the panels you have, so or can extend without hitting something, so I am going to do that. I think I'll leave the top three not extended. And now we have a lot of electric charge, but is it enough? Let's just verify. We don't have the sun out right now, so it's draining. And how much life support do we have? Now we have two years and 300 days for the two crew. So there's a whole year's worth on board here. we still got... Uh, Heat shields attached on all the vehicles. And, uh, okay, well, definitely recharging. Recharging plenty. This isn't optimal right now. I think if we control from here and go sun down I I don't want to use the fuel here 1.5 per second and then every now and again it drops to 0. 0.5 I wonder if we should just retract these maybe they're just blocking yeah I think they were just blocking the stations Those didn't seem to be. Those seem to be helping out. So we'll put them out again. Cannot deploy while stowed. Um, they're not stowed. Okay, well that's just a bug. Very close to Mars. And so it uh, bombed out at 29,000 there. Let's go around one more time. 
I'm really taking my time with this. Let's see that it all works out properly. Uh, I lost like a thousand there. And, but that's because we've retracted the ones on the lander. If we had those out, we'd be recharging at a higher rate, it seemed. And the only way to do that is to, I guess, go to the tracking station and come back, and then maybe we'll be able to extend. The... And yeah, when we extend this one, it actually diminishes the electric charge coming in. All right. Yeah, let's uh, turn to DDMH Depot and the light lander and deal with that situation. Okay, so with the UDMH Depot I plotted out uh, inclination correction here and then another burn at periapsis in order to rendezvous with the target, hopefully. And so first we need to do this 42 meter per second burn. As you can see the UDMH Depot has lots of docking ports. So one propellant only there. The important one is the Apollo docking system, of course, because that's the only one we have left on the actual station. All the rest are propellant only docking ports, so my hope is that the light lander has a propellant only one, though it could occupy one of the many Apollo docking ports on the station once we get there, so either way it'll be fine thanks to the fact that we have so many docking ports on this. It will expand the station in a very constructive way. But for now, so we're not, uh, we don't have any docking port problem it turns out. Let's do this inclination correction. And of course I'm, I'm gonna be a little bit free with the fuel here because we've got so much delta V. If we, you know, want to use fuel and need to do burns, it's best to do it with this rather than doing it once it's docked to something else or doing it with anything else aside from the depot since anything else would be more inefficient. So 48 ignitions remaining there and ignition. Well, that'll be good enough. 0 0.03 degrees. Okay, so we're planning for 31.4 well, okay, that does not seem to do what we want it to do, so let's replot that. Oh, indecisiveness. You know, it seems like uh, our periapsis and the target periapsis are quite different. We were at 166, the target's at 241. So let's go over to apoapsis and lift that periapsis up so we are a better match. Well, hopefully Mechjeb's indication will be well it says 1.6 kilometers but yeah I'll probably be trusting Mechjeb more okay so in two days we have that maneuver 6.5 meters per second only but then once we reach here we will have some relative velocity and it's probably gonna be quite a lot and it's not telling me how much it's slowing us down for an alarm Oh, Crewmaster A launch complete. Well, that's fine. We, we don't need to deal with that right now. I would like to do some Crewmaster A tests, but this, this is Mars. We have to do Mars things right now. And we might as well save an ignition and use RCS for this one. Even though we have so many ignitions, I just feel like we should save them. Relative speed says it's only going to be 35 meters per second. That's pretty darn good. This is not where I really needed the nice encounters game. <laughs> Could have used that on the Aries Spot A one, but I guess that was not to be. Okay, that will do for now. Let's go with two meters per second. What kind of docking port do we have there? This... Well, this is a propellant only docking port, of course. Now this causes a bit of a problem in that our engines are going to be facing the lander, so that's not great. I wanted to use this as a tug. But our engines would be hitting the lander. At the very least we should rotate it so that the engines will be going this way instead of potentially hitting the solar panels. Maybe, no, that's probably not wide enough so that they could conceivably be 
avoiding hitting the lander. Hmm. Well, there's no avoiding it. We'll see what we can do. Let's just do one thing at a time here. And one way or another, the light lander needs this in order to dock to the station because it's not going to be able to dock on its own because there's no docking port free for it. So it needs this docking port at the very minimum. We are now within 200 meters of the light lander, within one and a half minutes of docking. And, well, we are oriented properly. We can see its solar panels, and we've got our solar panels crossways to that, which means that at least the thrusters are not going to hit the solar panels. That's good. So, again, maybe need to rethink the UDMH depots as far as the thruster placement. Maybe we have thrusters, at, uh, maybe we have the engines at both ends. I mean, it's a little bit more mass, but gives added flexibility. And it seems like everything has the propellant only docking ports. So having the engines on the Apollo docking port side would make some sense. Okay, well, the lander is definitely not oriented properly to us, so let's slow down. Of course, orienting all the solar panels the same way would be good in terms of solar input, but I don't think we need to worry about that with these two. They're not going to take too much power. Okay, we have a docking. Okay, let's arrange some of this stuff. So, again, we want to fill up the tanks here. Okay, well, that fuel is shifted. And I want to make sure... Well, these engines aren't on right now, so... Wait, they are on. Let me shut them down. Because we want to conserve that fuel. And as much as... As distasteful as it is, I'm going to try and use these engines in order to bring it to a lower altitude. We're currently close to periapsis here. Okay, 2,800 meters per second, but still quite a lot. Quite a lot. We'll leave this one unlocked so those RCS can help us out. And, you know, we're about 1,000 meters per second above even the lowest orbit around Mars and about 600 above the orbit that we're targeting. So not too bad. Let's target that again. Our inclination with respect to the station is not bad, 0.12, so that's excellent. We don't have to make an inclination correction at least. All right, let's test if we can use these these uh, S5.92 engines in order to do the retro. Oh, I've left two engines on here. Shut that down. Shut that down. Okay. Okay, mm ignition. Uh, it doesn't seem to be changing our orbit at all. It seems like it's obstructed, which makes sense, so we can't get away with that. Let me just verify again. Yep, totally not affecting our orbit. Use an extra ignition for that, but... Okay, so I'll have to take care of this slowly if I want to maintain the fuel in there. And I'm not going to do it right now. Yep. I want to do one final thing. We won't dock this to Marsport 1 just yet. At least we've got two, these two missions together. So basically our main missions are in two clumps. The station clump and this clump. And we've got a spare Ares Pod G in a high orbit, but that can't actually land. And we've got a spare UDMH depot for emergencies and we've kept it to an orbit that's somewhere between Phobos and Deimos as far as its apoapsis. So that is the situation there. 
and now I want to see about landing Mars Base 1 somewhere. Alright, well, I rarely F5, but I think this would be a good time to Alt F5 even. And this is going to be before Mars Base Landing. I mean, I'm not saying that I think this is going to fail miserably, but we'll see. We'll see exactly what kind of trouble I get myself into. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we have already armed the parachutes, I believe. Yes, they are all armed. And if we check the info, they are Kevlar. So that's nominal. And we are on the nighttime side. So if we dip our periapsis into the atmosphere, we will be landing on the daylight side. And currently we're looking at... I think we should... I mean, I, I would actually like to land over here in Valles Marineris. But we're, we're not timed right for that. I could wait until Mars rotates and everything. But... It's not a bad idea to land right here in the middle of Mount Olympus and these three mountains, I forget what they're called. That's another theory. Not much has landed there, I don't think. The poles are another possibility altogether. And over here, this darker region, which suggests water, right? I mean, you can see there's an area here where it was obviously dug out by some sort of water flow in ancient, well, not even ancient, uh, times long past, millions of years ago, maybe billions. So that's another thing. Our other missions can get to that location, right? Everything is in the same inclination, so we can certainly land there if we place our base there. Okay, it's under 40 kilometers. I think that'll be good enough to ensure that we get to the ground here. I'm going to retract the panels now. I'm going to start these engines too. Remember if the Kerbals, or I think I'm just going to send one Kerbal to the surface, if the Kerbal wants to stay on the surface for longer than like a month, uh, that Kerbal has to reach this Mars base. It's got the extra food, water, and oxygen. Otherwise, the Kerbal who lands will have to go back into space pretty quickly and hang out up there. At least they've got the extra room of the spaceport. Not that it's a huge amount of room, but a little bit extra room. Okay, well, we're certainly not going to be going up again. Yep, uh, this is going to be a straight to the surface deal. And we're, we might be falling short of that particular location. We're going to end up somewhere around here. Not the most inspiring place. But you never know as far as a resource standpoint because I haven't sent a resource satellite here yet. Okay, we're 34 kilometers above the surface, 3,000 meters per second still. One reason I wanted to keep the heat shield is, of course, for the drag. And it's going to be super important coming up soon here. We're at 10 kilometers and still going more than 1,300 meters per second. Going to switch to SAS. Okay, drogue shoots are holding. That's good. 800 meters per second. 700, 600, 5 kilometers above the surface. 500 meters per second, 4 kilometers above the surface. Main shoots and full deployment of the drogue shoots. 300 meters per second, 3 kilometers above the surface. Two kilometers above the surface, 170 meters per second, full deployment of the main chutes, 
and separation of the heat shield. Hopefully it won't come back, hopefully it won't come back. Okay, we've got landing legs. I'm gonna take off SAS as the parachutes right us. Horizontal speed 3 meters, 2 meters. Heat shield has crashed 1 meter. And that's good for us. Oh, I might be too late on that. I might be too late. Oh, bad news. Might be good, might be good. Ow. Oh, it's gone sideways as usual. Hmm. Well, I could work on the landings, obviously. And we don't have magical reaction wheels to get this upright again. Will it repower itself if I extend this solar panel? Let's see. I mean, I could reload the quick save, but that was just pilot error, right? It's not quite recharging. Well, even like this, it's not recharging, so it's not a good base. I'm gonna leave it like this. We did do one of those quick saves, and I'm gonna let you guys decide whether I should try and land it again. I think I'll wrap it up here with this decision in the hands of my viewers and uh, I'll, I'll take your determination on that. Uh, an unofficial poll. So uh, yes, this is the situation. I could try and land it one more time, this time going full throttle up on the Gemini lander engines and getting it right. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's just that it's underpowered and it won't be able to defeat gravity in time. So could be either way. But, uh, yep. On that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.